Well, when President Obama's education secretary, Arne Duncan, was the head of Chicago's public schools, his office kept a list of powerful, well-connected people who asked for help getting certain children into the city's best public schools. The list, long held confidential, was disclosed this week by the Chicago Tribune. The paper reports the, that the nearly 40 pages of logs show admissions requests from 25 aldermen, Mayor Daley's office, the state House speaker, the state attorney general, the former White House social secretary, and a former United States senator. The log noted AD initials for Arne Duncan as the person requesting help for 10 students and a co-requester about 40 times. A spokesman for Duncan denied any wrongdoing and said Duncan used the list not to dole out rewards to insiders, but to shield principals from political interference. Duncan was chief executive of the Chicago Schools, the nation's third largest school system, from 2001 to 2009. During that time, he oversaw implementation of a program known as Renaissance 2010. The program's aim was to close 60 schools and replace them with more than 100 charter schools. Now, as President Obama's education, Education Secretary Duncan's overseeing a push by the administration to aggressively expand charter schools across the country. For more, we go to Chicago. We're joined by Azam Ahmed, the reporter for the Chicago Tribune, who broke this latest story about the so-called VIP list of requests, and Pauline Lippman, professor of education and policy studies at the University of Illinois, Chicago. She's also director of the Collaborative for Equity and Justice in Education at the university, is on the coordinating committee for Teachers for Social Justice. We welcome you both to Democracy now. Um, I want to go first to Azan Ahmed. Congratulations on this expose. Um, I'm calling it the A-plus list, I guess, the A-list. Um, what you're saying is the VIP list. Explain exactly how it worked. Um, well, Secretary Duncan had asked one of his staff members to keep a list of people who called his office on behalf of a student. So, in addition to VIPs, there were parents, uh, siblings, folks who just happened to call Arne Duncan's office uh, to request their child be considered or their sibling be considered for a, uh, a selective school. Um, but it's noted very—it's it's a very specific spreadsheet, the date that there was a request, the name of the student, the name of the parent, their top three choices of schools, uh, who exactly was requesting, and then there was a, a field for notes, a field to uh, determine what exactly happened with the candidate, and, uh, and then more explanatory dates. And what happened uh, to that list uh, after it was compiled? Uh, it was it was maintained, and uh, each individual case, and in this case, every case, whether it was a VIP or a parent, every case was followed up on, and uh, and some sort of resolution was reached. From the logs that we obtained, uh, some of that is it's very clear. In some cases, in other cases, it's unclear uh, what the final status ended up being of the uh, the individual student. Uh, talk about um, and I, I, it was kept up until this year. How did you get a hold of this list, Asa? Uh There there had long been rumors about such a list existing or there being some kind of a way to maybe lobby to get your kid into a school. Uh, it, was, it was never clear there was a list, but I began casting out to different sources, um, asking them, and, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a little bit of luck, I think. But, but other than them collecting the list, uh, was there any indication that then there was actual uh, efforts made with the various principals who were in charge of these schools to get these kids admitted? Uh, central office would call the principals and ask. Um, they've been unequivocal about saying they never pressured anybody to accept a student. Uh, and a few principals <clears throat> I've talked to have also said they never, they were never pressured. It was a, hey, we have this kid, we've checked out his background, pretty good scores, or, or whatever the case may be, do you have a space for them? Um, oftentimes on the list you'll see they, a student might have applied to the top one or two schools in the district, uh, and their, their test in scores just simply weren't high enough. And, uh, and often those kids would be put in a still desirable but, uh, but not as competitive school. Um, so oftentimes kids would get placed, maybe not in their first one or two choices, but, uh, but they would find somewhere better than perhaps their neighborhood school. You talk about the case of uh, former Senator uh, Carol Mosley Braun weighing in for a student to get in. Explain that story and who actually kept this list. Um, one of Duncan's top aides, David Pickens, was asked by Duncan to keep the list. And uh, in this case, uh, our understanding of it is Carol Mosley Braun was trying to get a, uh, a certain student into Whitney Young, which is a, uh, a very high performing school in the city. 
Um, they were, she was getting no response from the principal. She called David Pickens, who then asked the principal to call her back. Uh, and then whatever happened there was between the principal and Carol Mosley Braun. But ultimately, uh, one of the two students, Carol Mosley Braun, was interested in having placed at Whitney Young, did, get, did indeed get placed at Whitney Young. Well, we're also joined by uh, Pauline Lipman, professor of education and policy studies at the University of Illinois, Chicago. Could you talk about the, uh, the significance of this list and also the battle of parents uh, uh, in Chicago to get into these uh, elite schools uh, in, in the city? Yes, good morning. Um, I'm really glad that Azam's done this story because it provide some evidence for what we've pretty much known on the ground all along. And as you said, I think that what it reveals is a bigger scandal. Um, the larger scandal is that Chicago has uh, two basically a two-tiered education system with a handful of these selective enrollment magnet schools or boutique schools that have been set up under Renaissance 2010 and gentrifying in affluent neighborhoods, and then um, many disinvested neighborhood schools. So, in, so parents across the city are scrambling to try to get their kids into a few of these schools. Um, so instead of creating quality schools in every neighborhood, uh, what CPS has done is created this two-tier system and actually is closing down, as you said, neighborhood schools under Renaissance 2010 and replacing them with charter schools and a privatized education system, firing or laying off, I should say, um, certified teachers, uh, dismantling locally elected school councils and uh, creating a market of public education in Chicago, turning schools over to private turnaround operators. And this is, um, in the bigger, bigger scandal, this is now the national agenda under the Obama administration for education. And amazingly, Arne Duncan doesn't have that much of a—he's uh, not an educator uh, by trade, uh, uh, to speak of. Can you talk a little bit about his background? Yeah. Um, not only is he not an educator uh, by trade, I mean, he was a, a functionary in the Daly administration, but because Chicago is um, under mayoral control of schools, which is another part of Obama's uh, and Duncan's uh, national agenda under the, the federal stimulus race to the top funds, um, because of that, what we have is exactly um, a school system that is led at the top by virtually no educators. There is only one educator in a high position. The board are all appointed by Daly. They are all bankers um, or corporate heads. Um, the, um, the CEO of schools before Duncan, Paul Vallis, um, was in, in Daly's budget office. Uh, the new CEO, Ron Huberman, ran the Chicago Transit Authority. So we have um, a school system that, as a whole, is led by corporate managers, not by educators. And in fact, that's revealed in the fact that there's basically no research um, that supports any of the interventions that they've made under Renaissance 2010. And there's a good deal of research that demonstrates that it has been damaging to students and to communities and has not improved the educa their education. We're talking to Professor Pauline Lippmann. She teaches education policy studies at the University of Illinois, Chicago. Arne Duncan said Katrina, you know, the hurricane, may have been the best thing to happen to New Orleans when it comes to education. How do you see what's going on right now in Chicago playing out in the national uh, scape uh, with Arne Duncan, head of education in Chicago, now become the education secretary? Well, I think that um, <laughs> that's a really good question, because I think probably the best phrase to describe what's, what is happening nationally is what Naomi Klein calls disaster capitalism. So we have a situation in which there's a fiscal crisis in the cities, 
and in the states. Um, we have a situation in which we have a long history of disinvested public schools in communities of color. 